Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all keeping well. Got a bit of fluff. <laughs> uh, so last week we finished off the Norman period with Empress Matilda. And if you haven't seen those two videos yet, they will be linked somewhere for you to go and find and watch. But this week we're going to take a little sneaky trip over to Scotland as it's been a while. And this week is going to be all about Malcolm IV of Scotland, uh, grandson to King David I. Uh, spoiler alert. And before we get into the video, I just really need to apologise to anyone Scottish watching this video. I really apologise for the pronunciation. I cannot pronounce shit half the time. So it is very painful for me, but I will try and I do apologise. Please don't hate me. <laughs> anyway, let's get into today's video. the fourth of Scotland was the son of Henry of Huntingdon and Ada of Warren or Warren. Uh, Malcolm was grandson to King David I of Scotland and he was born between the 23rd and 24th of April 1141 and he earned the epithet the maiden due to his youth and his religious devotion and the fact he never married. In 1152, Malcolm became his grandfather's heir after his father, Henry, had died. Malcolm had been placed into the custody of Duncan, Earl of Fife, and he was taken on progress around Scotland following the old Celtic tradition of showing the heir to their kingdom. On May the 24th, 1153, King David I of Scotland died and following his wish for his 12-year-old grandson Malcolm to become his, his heir, Malcolm became Malcolm IV of Scotland. The Scottish Chronicles don't mention Malcolm's mother Ada playing a big part in the politics of Scotland. She did, however, appear at court often, being present at many important occasions. And Ada was witness to 16 of Malcolm's charters. Ada also took a great interest in her children's future. And she did everything possible to persuade her young son to marry. The chronicler William of Newburgh told the story of the lengths that Ada went to to get her reluctant son to marry. Ada went as far as placing a young woman of noble birth into Malcolm's bed. Malcolm not wishing to cause an argument or to cause the young woman any blushes. He allowed her to spend the night in his bed whilst Malcolm slept on the floor wrapped up in his cloak. This didn't seem to stop Ada in trying to persuade Malcolm to marry, but in the end, the young king just had to beg his mother to stop. In Ada's defence, although it sounds like she was really pushing for Malcolm to marry, to, oh well, to lose his virginity and to produce grandchildren, in Ada's attempts to persuade Malcolm in marrying was in fact a political motive as well as it was personal. Ada was well aware of the importance of a royal marriage, not only for the continuation of a dynasty and in a political alliance, but also forged ability of the monarchy. Ada, though, wasn't the only one who was keen on to see the young king marry. The Scottish Royal Council had continued to pressure Malcolm into finding a bride, even when Ada had given up. Arnold, Bishop of St Andrews, encouraged Malcolm to find a suitable bride, but the young king was no more persuaded by the archbishop and his council than he was by his own mother. 
Malcolm wished to hold on to the highest ideals of Christian knighthood and remain chaste. But it could also have been Malcolm's age. He was only 12, coming up 13. And he was a boy. And it could have been that that led him to believe that he had many more years before he even needed to think about settling down and having a family. Malcolm's kingship faced many challenges during his short reign. He faced the revolt of Summerley, Earl of Argyll, in November 1154. Continued for several years, only ending when Summerley seeked peace in 1159, when he was deprived of his chief supporters, the Macheaths. So father and sons were reconciled with King Malcolm in 1157. <clears throat> Good me. Malcolm's greatest challenge would come from his neighbour, England. Malcolm's grandfather, King David, had taken full advantage of the anarchy with the accession of King Henry II in 1154. It changed the political landscape completely. The two kings, they met at Chester and uh, in 1157 and Malcolm performed homage in the manner in which his grandfather had done to the old King Henry. The homage suggests that Malcolm was accepting that he was a vessel to King Henry as King David had done to the old um, King Henry. <laughs> I had a complete mind blank. The um, Malcolm was forced to resign his lordship of Northumberland, Cumberland and Westmoreland, although the honour of Huntingdon um, was returned to the Scottish king and his brother William was given the lordship of Tyndale. In 1159, Malcolm, along with his brother and others, had joined Henry II and the English army in an expedition to Toulouse. The military enterprise also gave Malcolm the chance to be knighted in the field. Henry knighted Malcolm a few days later at Perigru. I really hope that's right. I'm really sorry. The expedition went off with initial success and the army overran the country of Toulouse before laying siege to the city itself. However, the siege had to be abandoned when King Louis VII of France intervened. By the end of the year, Henry and Malcolm were crossing back to England. Malcolm returned to Scotland in 1160 and straight into a revolt of six earls led by the Turth, um, Earl of Strathern, I'm really sorry, who was angry at Malcolm's expedition with the English army. Mediation by the clergy led to an uneasy peace and the abandoning of their besiege on Malcolm at Perth. Then there was unrest um, in Galloway. Malcolm made several trips into the region before the end of the year when Fergus, Lord of Galloway, submitting to the king and that would be the last major unrest of any Scottish earls, not only for Malcolm's reign but also that for his brother William. Malcolm was once again summoned to meet Henry II in 1163. Although he fell ill at Doncaster, Malcolm was still expected to complete the journey to Henry's court. He arrived at Woodstock at the end of June and it appeared that Henry wanted to assert his supremacy over the group of Welsh rulers who had also been called to attend. On the 1st of July, Malcolm renewed his oath to Henry and, and handed over hostages, the most senior being his youngest brother, David, soon to be Earl of Huntingdon. Malcolm then returned to Scotland where he faced yet another revolt by Summerley, Lord of the Isles, but he was killed 
in an attempt raid on Glasgow in 1164. It soon became clear that Malcolm never fully recovered from the illness he had suffered in Doncaster in 1163. He frequently complained of pain in his head and feet. Malcolm had planned a pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostelesta. <laughs> God, I know that's wrong. I am so sorry if I can't pronounce it. To um, pray for healing. Um, but sadly, Malcolm was too ill to make the trip. On Thursday, the 9th of December, 1165, aged just 24, Malcolm IV of Scotland died at Jedburgh. Malcolm reigned for 12 years and six months. He was buried with his ancestors at Dunfermline Abbey. Malcolm was succeeded by his brother William, becoming known as William the Lion. And there is Malcolm's very short story. But for me personally, no matter how short they are, they all deserve to be told. They all deserve to be recognised. And... Unfortunately, through history, they get lost. Uh, I think it's a real, real shame because they are important to history. That's my views. Anyway, so before we, before I go, <coughs> oh God, I've completely lost my thought now. <laughs> if you would like me to do the um, Princes and Kings of Wales, then let me know. Leave a comment down below or give this video a big thumbs up. Thumbs? What the hell's a thumb? A thumb. Uh, it's going to be one of those days. I can see it coming. It's the, it's the heat. That's my excuse and I'm bloody sticking to it. <laughs> so yes, if you'd like me to do videos on the Welsh princes and kings, I will do that and I will try my best with the pronunciation. Even though I'm in Herefordshire and yes, I'm on the border of Wales, I still can't pronounce it. <laughs> I try. I really try. Feel sorry for me. No, give me your sympathy. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go. <laughs> oh, jeez. I tell you, it's one of those days. It really is. I think the heat's really gotten to me. <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Keep being amazing. Keep subscribing because you don't want to miss this, Looney. <laughs> And keep liking and keep sharing. Just keep being brilliant because you're all bloody wonderful. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. <laughs> Bye.